rising dust from the riding from the rising dust of your blessed train wow wow Allah Hazrat rahmatullahi ta'ala alayhi says what does the rose say when it comes to Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam the rose the king and the queen of all flowers and all plants what does he say kya madine mein saba aayi ki phoolon mein hai aaj kya madine se saba aayi hai phoolon ki hai aaj kuch nayi bu bhi ni bhi ni kuch nayi bu bhi ni bhi ri pyari pyari vah vah has the morning breeze today has the morning breeze today come from madina says the rose has the morning breeze today come from madina says the rose for all the fragrance in the flowers for all the fragrance in the flowers is amazing wow wow कुछ नई बूबीनी बीनी प्यारी प्यारी वाह वाह रसूलुल्लाह सल्लल्लाहु तआला अलैहि वसल्लम ही वाज सो ब्लेस्ड बाय अल्लाह सुभानहु व तआला दैट द प्लेस बिटवीन हिज ब्लेस्ड होम एंड द मेंबर ऑफ रसूलुल्लाह सल्लल्लाहु तआला अलैहि वसल्लम अल्लाह सुभानहु व तआला सेड दैट दिस इज फ्रॉम अमंग्स द गार्डन ऑफ द गार्डन्स ऑफ पैराडाइस इस तरफ रोजे का नूर इस तरफ रोजे का नूर उस संत मिंबर की बहार बीच में बीच में जन्नत की प्यारी प्यारी क्यारी वाह वाह from the brilliance of the chamber from the brilliance of the chamber to the pulpit's excellence is a garden sent from heaven is a garden sent from heaven in all its glory wah wah kya baat hai wah wah kya baat hai kya hi zauq afza shafaat hai tumhari wah wah how your intercession inspires us to hope for more कर्ज लेती है गुना पर है वाह वाह इवन पायटी वुड लाइक टू लोन मुहम्मद मुहम्मद माशा अल्लाह तबारक वाली इनका पढ़ना अपनी बारगाह में कबूल फरमाए आइए अब दूसरी नाज शरीफ पढ़ने के लिए मैं मौलाना अब्दुलरहमान साहब को आवाज़ दूँ कि माइक पे आएँ और नात नबी सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम सुनाएँ सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि कया
खोलो जी चाहता है जी चाहता है जी चाहता है तोहफे में के भेजो में उन्हें आंख जी चाहता है जी चाहता है तोहफे में के भेजो में उन्हें आंख के दर्शन का तो दर्शन हो नजराने का नजराना के दर्शन का तो दर्शन हो नजराने का नजराना आ दिल में तुझे रख लो ए जल वह जाना दिल में तुझे रख लो जजाकल्ला माशा सुबहान अल्लाह दुर्दे पाक पढ़ी अल्लाह मसल सीदना नबीना मौलाना मोहम्मद सीदना मौलाना मोहम्मद वाली वसहबी बारिक वसलम सलातमसलमली सैदी या रसूल सल्ह तसलम दो अशार कसीदा बुरदा शरीफ के तमाम हजरात मिल के मेरे साथ लाउडली पढ़ें मौला मौलायासली वसलिमदाई मल आबादन आला हबी बी का खैर खलकी कुल्ली मोहम्मद सैदुल कौन निवास कल मोहम्मद सैदुल कौन निवास कल मोहम्मद सैदुल कौन निवास कल वलफरी कैनी मिन और बिंवा मिल जमी मौलायास लीवासलिम दाई मल आबादन आला हबी बी का खैर खल की कुल्ली मौला यासलिवासलिम दाई मल आबादन आला हबी बी का खैर खल की कुल हो वल हबी बुल्लजी तुर जा शफा तो हो वल हबी बुल्लजी तुर जा शफा तो हो हो वल हबी बुल्लजी तुर जा शफा तो कुल्ली हौ लिम्मी नल अहवाली मोक तहिमी मौलायास लीवासलिम दाई मल आबादन आला हबी बी का खैर खल की कुल बिल मुस्ताफा बल्लिग माकाशेदना या रबी बिल मुस्ताफा बल्लिग माकाशेदना या रबी बिल मुस्ताफा बल्लिग माकाशेदना वग फिर लाना मामादाया वसी अल करमी मौलायास लीवासलिम दाई मल आबादन आला हबी 
جہان الفت میں دی کی شمع جلانے والا میرا نبی ہے جہان میں الفت میں دی کی شمع جلانے والا میرا نبی ہے جہان الفت میں دی کی شمع جلانے والا میرا نبی ہے وہ بارہ تاریخ دن دو شمبہ وہ بارہ تاریخ دن دو شمبہ کو آنے والا میرا نبی ہے جہان الفت میں دی کی شمع جلانے والا میرا نبی ہے اور تو ناز کر اپنی زندگی پر تیرے گھر آئے میرے پیمبر تو ناز کر اپنی زندگی پر تیرے گھر آئے میرے پیمبر تیرے گھر آئے میرے پیمبر اے آمین آبی تیرا مقادر اے آمین آبی تیرا مقادر جگانے والا میرا نبی ہے اے آمین آبی تیرا مقادر جگانے والا میرا نبی ہے جہان الفت میں دی کی شمع جلانے والا میرا نبی ہے ابو جہل نے یہی کہا تھا ہے میری موٹھی میں بول کیا ابو جہل نے یہی کہا تھا ہے میری موٹھی میں بولیے کیا ابو جہل نے یہی کہا تھا ہے میری موٹھی میں بولیے کیا اور زبان کنکر سے اپنا کلمہ زبان کنکر سے اپنا کلمہ پڑھانے والا میرا نبی ہے زبان کنکر سے اپنا کلمہ پڑھانے والا میرا نبی ہے ستم گری کا تھا دور ایسا تھے بیٹیاں دفن کرتے زندہ ستم گری کا تھا دور ایسا تھے بیٹیاں دفن کرتے زندہ تو بیٹیوں پر سرا پر احمد تو بیٹیوں پر سرا پر احمد لٹانے والا میرا نبی ہے 
तो बेटियों पर सरा पर रहमत लुटाने वाला मेरा नबी है जहान उल्फत में दी की शम्मा जलाने वाला मेरा नबी है दुर्दे पाक पढ़े अल्लाह सैदना नबी ना मौलाना मोहम्मद वालबारिक वसलम सलातली के आसदी रसूल अल्लाह सल्ला तसलम सारा राया आप की मीलाद पर निसार तेरी चहल पहर पर हजार वईदें रबी अव्वल सिवाय इबलीस के जहाँ में सभी तो खुशियाँ मना रहे हैं शायर फरमाते हैं कि सारा लम मुस्कुराया आप की मीलाद पर आप की मीलाद पर सारा लम मुस्कुराया आप की मीलाद पर आप की मीलाद पर और होरों ने नगमा होरों ने नगमा सुनाया आप की मीलाद पर होरों ने नगमा सुनाया आप की मीलाद पर होरों ने नगमा सुनाया आप की मीलाद पर और ये शेर भी मुलायजा फरमा लें सुबह अल्लाह कैदे मोहब्बत के साथ कि जाने माँ जाने काबा आपके एजाज में आपके एजाज में जाने माँ जाने काबा आपके एजाज में आपके एजाज में रब ने काबा भी रब ने काबा भी झुकाया आपकी मीलाद पर रब ने काबा भी झुकाया आपकी मीलाद पर आपकी मीलाद पर सारा लम मुस्कुराया आपकी मीलाद पर और आज मिलादुलनबी है कि इस पर सजा हुआ है माशा लाइटें लगी हुई हैं शायर फरमाते हैं कि मेरे घर भी आओगे सरकार मैंने इसलिए नारे तकबीर नारे तकबीर नारे रिसालत नारे रिसालत उलमाए अहले सुन्नत जश्न ईद मिलादुलनबी नारे तकबीर नारे रिसालत सारा लम मुस्कुराया आपकी मीलाद पर आपकी मीलाद पर और मैं मेरे घर भी आओगे सरकार मैंने इसलिए सरकार मैंने इसलिए मैंने अपना घर मैंने अपना घर सजाया आपकी मीलाद पर मैंने अपना घर सजाया आपकी मीलाद पर हो ने नगमा सुनाया आपकी मीलाद पर जजाक हाफिज हुई 
we wish to extend on behalf of the Ladysmith Mosque and Madrasa Trust a very warm welcome to you and those who have traveled with you. Allah reward you fi dunya wal akhirah. I just wish to make a very special appeal at the end of the program, whoever will be making the dua want to make a special dua for his eminence, Hazrat Mawlan Abdul Rauf Sufi. I think, I believe that we owe it to him. These are the Buzrugani Deen, those who have made khidmat, those who spread the Deen of Islam, and we supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah grant him Jannatul Firdaus. Without delay, we have got a dynamic, vibrant, living scholar, Hafiz Fuzail Sufi. I heard last night a lecture by Hafiz Fuzail Sufi in Masjidul Quds. And how he breaks up, I'm also yet to learn, how he breaks up individually the words of the Holy Quran and he expounds these words for the benefit of the Ummah. Alhamdulillah. So without delay, I would humbly request our guest of honor, Hafiz Fuzail Sufi, to please come forward to the mic. The Holy Prophet Muhammad has said, Al Hikmatu Dalatul Mu'min, Fa'inama Wajaduha, Fawa Hakubiha. Knowledge is the lost property of the believer. Wherever he finds it, he finds it here in the masjid, he takes it, he reflects upon it, and he puts it into practice. Jazakumullah. Hanafi, what does Imam Abu Hanifa call himself? 
And more importantly, in today's discussion, if we call ourselves in terms of our spiritual affiliation Qadri, what does Huzur Ghusul Azam Firan al Fir Dasagid call himself? We have named ourselves Qadri after his name. So if we are Qadri, then Sultanul Awliya Ghusul Azam Firan al Fir Dasagid Sayyidina Sheikh Abdul Qadir al Jilani Qadr sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what does he refer to himself as? Abdul Qadir al Jili is his name, uh, name of his town, the name of his birth. Imam Bukhari was named after the area of his, of his area, Bukhari, Bukhara, and so on. Right? So, how does Abdul Qadir Sayyidina Sheikh Abdul Qadir al Jilani refer to himself as? We are Qadri because we follow him. He gave the answer. He said, Wa kullu waliyin lahu qadam. وكل ولي له قدم وإني على قدم النبي بدر الكمال. He said for every ولي there is a a نقشفة that they follow and there is a part in which they follow. وإني على قدم النبي بدر الكمال. And I am following in the footsteps of the Holy Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم who is the perfection, spiritual perfection as you would call it. بدر بدر الكمال. وعبد القادر المشهور اسمي وجدي صاحب العين الكمالي. The Holy Prophet he says, and I am Abdul Qadir, and my name is famous, and my grand and, and perfection. So how would he refer to himself? Not as Qadri, he refers to himself as Muhammadi. Rasul Azam Piran Pir Dastagir refers to himself as Muhammadi, and this has been shown in Qalaid al Jawahir. When there's an incident when Sayyidina Shaykh Abdul Qadir al Jilani Aziz was on his pulpit, on his mimbar, and he was busy giving his, his lecture and his discourse. And in the midst of his discourse, he had an unveiling, and he was informed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Sayyidina Khizr alayhi salatu was salam. Right? Sayyidina Khizr alayhi salam happened to be passing by. So Shaykh Abdul Qadir al Jilani you know, edged away from his mimbar and he stood up. And he said to Sayyidina Khizr Ali Sam, who was, he was hidden, he couldn't be seen by the people or the eyes of the people. And he said, he said, Ya Israeli, O Israeli, O the one who's from the Bani Israel, Ya Israeli, Fasma, who is a Muhammadi? And where did Ghusul Azam, and by the way, in the tafsir of Sayyidina Sheikh Abdul Qadir al Jilani, which is called Tafsir al Jilani, it's in Arabic, right? In various parts of his tafsir, uh, فَعَلَيْكَ أَيُّهَا الْمُحَمَّدِي He refers to the reader and the one who is studying his tafsir is, is upon you, O Muhammadi. So he's given us that title as well. فَعَلَيْكَ أَيُّهَا الْمُحَمَّدِي So Ghusul Azam has the appellation of Muhammadi and he refers to us who are reading his kitab and who are following in his manhaj as Muhammadi as well. So my question is, now we've got to answer, who is Muhammadi? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this answer in the Holy Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started it off with Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah. And then Allah said immediately, وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ Those who are with him. I can't even go beyond that for the moment. That would be too long a lecture. وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ If you understand who are with Muhammad and who is with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you will understand who is a Muhammadi. Because the, obviously, you know, if you are born and belonging to a certain party, you are affiliated to them, you are connected to them. And you say, no, he's an ANC member, he's like this, he's, he belongs to this uh, political, whatever it is. Right? But if you are Muhammadi, the identifying characteristic and the defining characteristic of a Muhammadi according to the Holy Quran is وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ Those who are with him. Ya Allah, what does it mean those who are with him? Well, it means those who are with him or those who were with him physically. At the topmost position. Those who were with him spiritually. Those who are with him intellectually. With him ideologically. Those who are with him devotionally. Those who are with him in this world. Those who are with him in the Qabr. Those who are with him on the day of Qiyamah. And those who are with him, inshallah ta'ala, in Jannah. وَالَّذِينَ معه. You see, it starts off from the dunya and ends off in Jannah. And it has, that is physically. 
And on every other level, you have to be with Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So I'm going to break it down for you like Mawlana said and explain to you walladina ma'ah in terms of the context of the teaching of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke about those people and he singled out people who had a, a higher rank amongst the Sahaba than others because he singled them out for their particular closeness and ma'iyah with Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on various levels. And in a hadith of Tirmizi, I'm just going to give, I'm not going to give you the words, I'm just going to give you the extrapolation of the hadith of the Holy Prophet. He says, if you want to be amongst those people, walladina ma'ah, those who are with him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and who are Muhammadi, then you got to have the amanah of Abu Ubaidah Amir ibn Jarrah. So those who are with him intellectually and educationally, who are they? They are Abu, Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah. Why? Because Abu Ubaidah has the quality of amanah and trustworthiness in him. And then, if you want to be one of those people who are with Muhammad Rasulullah, then you must know that the, the laws of khilla and hurma, like Mu'az bin Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu. If you want to be Muhammadi, then you must be like Zayd bin Thabit radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Prophet sallam, taught him the knowledge of wirasa, fiqh, inheritance. If you are Muhammadi, then you must be like oh, those people there who know the quality of tilawa, like Sayyidina Ubay bin Ka'b radiallahu ta'ala anhu. But all that I mentioned just now is what the Sahaba kiram, according to their level of closeness to the Prophet of Allah. And this had to do with the ilm and knowledge, whether it is wirasa, whether it was amana, whether it was tilawa, whether it was hilla and hurma, like Ma'az bin Jabal and so on there. And then you have a second higher level. And the higher level, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, the higher level is the level of Siddiq Akbar, Farooq Azam, Sayyidina Usman Ghani, Ali al Murtada Karamullah Ta'ala Wajahul Kareem. If the first strata of Sahaba were with the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in terms of what we would call illumination and inspiration and education, the higher level of Sahaba Kiram were those people in terms of spiritual illumination. One is ilm, and the higher level of that is that the level of, of spirituality that comes with the ilm. And that was granted to the four Khulafai Rashidun as we know them. Right? And in terms of this ma'iyah with the Holy Prophet وسلم, nobody can come close to the four Khulafai Rashidun. Right? If you look at walladina ma'a, those who are with him, then look at yare ghar and yare mazar. Then look at the one who is the companion of the Rasul of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in ghar e Thawr, in the cave of Thawr, and look at the one who is the you. Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala. If Mu'az bin Jabal took the inheritance from the Prophet of Allah, warasatul anbiya, wa inna al-ulama warasatul anbiya, they took the inheritance of prophets which is, uh, which is ilm. If Sayyidina Mu'az bin Jabal took the knowledge of Hilla and Hurma, and Zayd bin Sabit took that of Wirasa, and Sayyidina Abu Ubaidah Amir ibn Jarrah took of Amana, then Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala took the ruhaniyah of the Holy Prophet Do you know what is the spirituality of the Prophet of Allah? Imagine if the spirituality of Allah's, of, of Allah's Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam were to, were, to, were to supercharge you, what would happen? What would happen? Well, ask yourself this question. Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala anhu is in the ghar e thawr with the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam day and night. Day and night. Nobody is there. دل میں ہو یاد تری گوشہ تنہائی ہو پھر تو خلوت میں خلوت میں عجب انجمن آرائی ہو اللہ اکبر یہ تو بلاوڈ اس انفرنٹ آف یو وات ہیپن تو صدیق اکبر رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ ان دا دی این نائٹ وات ہیپن تو ہیم ویل وین دی فائنلی ریچ خبا اور دی پیپل کیم آؤٹ تو میٹ رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم دیس اس صحیح البخاری رسول اللہ اس سیٹڈ Siddiq Akbar is seated next to Rasulullah. The people of Quba, the Banu Awf, have never met Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. But everybody who is coming, they are coming in the presence of Rasulullah and Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. But most of the people are going and greeting Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. They don't know who is Rasulullah and they don't know who Siddiq Akbar is. They are seated there. Right? So what happens that each one who comes, they come to Siddiq Akbar and they greet him. And Rasulullah just smiles, doesn't say a word. Rasulullah just smiles and doesn't say a word. He smiles and he doesn't say a word. Until Siddiq Akbar realized the people can't distinguish between me and Rasulullah. Why? Why? Do they look the same? No. 
They don't look the same. But the nur of Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam was so intense upon Siddiqa Akbar in Ghar al-Sawr that the shayil says, Ay junoon e shawk, takmeel e muhabbat ho gayi. Yaar ki surat bazahir meri surat ho gayi. He says the nur of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was so intense on the face of Siddiq Akbar that even the, 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 the one who is looking couldn't make out the distinguish, couldn't distinguish who is the Habib, who is the Peer, and who is the Murid, as we would call it. This is Ruhaniyat, Walladheena Ma'ah, until the whole personality of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, infuses your entire being. Walladheena Ma'ahu, that he is Muhammadi. Siddiq Akbar is Muhammadi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam You go to Umar ibn Khattab Because of time Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Said one thing Same thing Spiritual illumination Annihilation And he received Siddiq Akbar took the Ruhaniyah Of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab Radiyallahu Ta'ala Who inherited the, 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 the Kamal of the Nubuwa Of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam When the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Said Law kana ba'di nabiyun La kana Umar ibn Khattab He said If there had to be a Nabi after me Which is not going to happen the person that has most qualified for it in terms of what he has received from me from the faizan and the blessings of Nubuwa is nobody else but Umar ibn al-Khattab. So he said, had there had to be a Nabi, then from my ummah, the only person worthy of that position of the faizan of Nubuwa from Muhammad Rasulullah would be Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And then, you have, I'm going quickly because of time, right? Then you have the third level of Usman al-Ghani radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Who took the faizan of risalat from Muhammad Rasulullah, messengership of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam? What happened? Allah subhanahu wa taala speaks about that incident. لَقَدْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أَنِ إِنَّ هَنْدَ فَاللَّهِ يَدُ اللَّهِ فَوْقَ أَيْدِيهِمْ But Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam has sent his ambassador, his naib, the one who is the recipient of the nur of Al Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam, physically and spiritually. He is the nurain, Uthman al-Ghani radiyallahu taala anhu. If Rasulullah chooses an ambassador to represent him as the representative of Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam in Mecca, Rasulullah chooses chooses Usman ibn Ali radiallahu taala anhu. When he reaches Mecca, look at his look at his nisbat with Rasulullah. Kaaba is in front of him. They haven't seen the Kaaba for so long. They haven't made tawaf around the Holy Kaaba for so long. It is their, their ancestral and cultural and historical right and their spiritual right. He has an opportunity as the ambassador of Rasulullah. He has diplomatic immunity. They tell him, Oh, Usman, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, you have an option. If you wish, you may make tawaf around the Holy Kaaba. But the news in, in where the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said in the Bay'atul Ridwan is that Usman Ghani has passed on. He's been murdered. He's been assassinated. Rasul knows because they are so connected. He says, Usman wasn't murdered. Usman hasn't died. In the real sense of the word, Usman fana ho gaye hai. There's the difference. Usman has become fana in me. So Rasulullah says, I'm taking bay'ah. But he, then he takes his hand and he says, this is the hand of Usman. Meaning my hand is the hand of Usman. My representation is the representation of Usman. And Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala says, وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ I am with Rasulullah and Rasulullah is with me. So if Rasulullah is not with me, Rindo ke liye mai khana bhi kaabe ke barabar hota hai. Rindo ke liye mai khana bhi kaabe ke barabar hota hai. Murshid ki gali ka ek phaira so haj ke barabar hota hai. He says, the Kaaba may be there, but if the Kaaba, my Kaaba of Kaabas is not with me, in spite of the fact that Kaaba is before me, I will not make Tawaf until my Rasul makes Tawaf first. Because before anything, I'm with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And then, وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ of Sayyidina Ali al-Murtada karamu Allah ta'ala wa jahul kareem. What do you say about Ali? What do you say about him? Ali yum minni wa ana min Ali. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Finished. He said, Ali is from me and I am from Ali. Ali. We're talking about ma'a, those who are, just purely for, for you to understand. Qurb, physical nearness. The qurb of Siddiq Akbar radiallahu ta'ala anhu in ghar al thawr And then take the qurb of Ali Kisa and Ali Aba in the cloak of Rasulullah. The cloak, Ali Kisa. Allahu Akbar. What must have taken place inside? What nur and faz 
must be inside the qurb and the nearness which the kisa or the cloak of the Holy Prophet afforded to, to Fatima al Zahra and Hasnain Karimain and Ali al Murtada Karimullah. And he said for them, Hasanu minni wa ana min Hasan, Husaynu minni wa ana min Husayn. Walladina ma'a. They are Muhammadi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And this being with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam intellectually and spiritually is not only in the dunya. In the Akhira, Siddiq Akbar is Yare Ghar, Yare Mazar, Umar Farooq, Yare Mazar. What did the Holy Prophet Sallallahu said? If they are with me here, they will be with me in the year after. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu said, Anna ard. I am the first one for whom the earth will be opened up on the day of resurrection. Then the Prophet of Allah said, Walladina Ma'a, and those who are with him. Thumma Abu Bakr. Then Abu Bakr. Thumma Umar. And then Umar, meaning if the, when the earth is destroyed, when the Qiyamah takes place on the day of Mahshar, Allahu Akbar. This is Walladina Ma'a. This is who a Muhammadi is. And then in the in Jannah, in Jannah, people are going to have a problem. Lots of people are going to have a problem from our Ummah. For God saves them. Why? Jannah is your final destination. Jannah is your final destination. And who do you want to be within Jannah? What's the highest position that you can acquire in Jannah? Which is Al-Firdaus. That's the highest maqam. Sallallahu al firdaus the Prophet of Allah. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Al-Firdaus, the highest ranking place in Jannah. But what is Jannah all about? What constitutes Jannah in the real sense of the word? Well, Jannah is a place. Jannah is a dimension. Jannah is the most coveted place. لا عين رأت ولا أذن سمعت ولا خطر على قلب بشر. No eye has ever seen how beautiful Jannah is. Not even the thought of what Jannah is has even passed our minds yet. But Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa sallam gave a description of his neighborhood in Jannah. His jiwar, his neighborhood in Jannah. Rasulullah says, my neighborhood is called Al-Wasila. The highest maqam in Al-Firdaus is Al-Wasila. Ati Muhammadan Al-Wasila. But you know what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi stated? You know who's there with me in Al-Wasila? He said, لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍّ رَفِيقٍ For every Nabi, there is a companion. وَرَفِيقِ يَعْنِي فِي الْجَنَّةِ Usman ibn Affan. Allahu Akbar. My companion. In my neighborhood, in my house, in my in my area in Jannah, who will be my companion who's with me? Usman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Ya Rasulullah, your house is here. Who's your neighbor? Talha and Zubair. Talha wal Zubair, Jariya fil Jannah. Talha and Zubair are my neighbors in Jannah. Can you imagine that Jannah? Where Usman Ghani is there. The neighbor of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is Sayyidina Talha and Sayyiduna Zubair. And Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Siddiq Akbar, they are Sayyidah Kuhulil Jannah. They are the masters of the elders of Jannah. And An Hassan and An Hussein, Sayyidah Shababi Ahlil Jannah. Wa Fatima Ta Zahra, Sayyidah Tunisai Ahlil Jannah. See the beauty of those people who are Muhammadi who qualify for the title of Muhammadi, they become the kings and queens of Jannah. They become the princes of Jannah. They become the neighbors of Rasulullah in Jannah. They become the comp Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannah. But there are some people out there, you and I yearn for Jannah. You and I beg for Jannah. Every day, وَدَخِلْنَا فِي جَنَّةِ الْفِرْدَوْسِ Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahman. We're making that dua. But you know what Rasulullah said? Al Jannatu Tashka Tashtaku ila Thalatha. He says, You and I yearn for Jannah. You and I ask for Jannah. But Rasulullah said, There are three people that Jannah yearns for them. Allahu Akbar. Ya Rasulullah, who are these people? Al Jannatu Tashtaku ila Thalatha. Ali. Wa Ammar. Wa Salman. He says, Every one of my ummah will beg for Jannah, ask for Jannah, yearn for Jannah. But Jannah, in, in spite of all of its beauty, Jannah is begging and waiting and yearning for the day when Ali will be with it. 
when 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 Ammar bin Yasser will be with it and when Salman al Farsi will be in Jannah because for Jannah that will be its Jannah that Ali people who are Muhammadi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam but the challenge for us is and this is the the the, the crux of the matter you can say but you hold on Siddiq Akbar Farooq Azam Ikhwan Ghani Mawla Ali Shere Khuda Ashara Mubashara Ahlul Bayt we are not in that rank. Companionship of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So what opportunity do we have? What chance do we have? What chance do we have? Where can we attain this maqam of becoming Muhammadi sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam made it easy for his ummah. He said, yes, Gan Karimain, or Siddiq Akbar, or Farooq Azam, and all the other Sahaba, Kiram, Ridwanullahi, Ali, Majma'in. But the Rahmah of Rahmatun Lil Alameen is such that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam has made it such by Allah's mercy that Rasulullah said, in my ummah, I know there will be people who will love me in spite of the fact that they have not seen me. إن من أشد أمتي لي حبا صحيح مسلم ناس يكونون بعدي there will be people who will come after me they may not have been physically in my era they may not have been physically with me معي they were not with me but their hearts بعدي يود أحدهم لو رأني بأهله ومالي that if they were to get one chance and one opportunity to get a glimpse of me they would sacrifice their children and they would sacrifice their wealth just to see me once subhanallah subhanallah allahu akbar ya rasulullah mahboob e khuda ke jalwo se iman ki aankhein roshan hain be dekhe hi jab ye aalam hai didar ka aalam so for people like this Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has given us five let's make it four we'll just, we condense it into one four things that you need to do you know the haq chariya let's make it for the four what do you require to become Muhammadi now this is for you and me how do you become Muhammadi requirement number one not in particular order requirement number one ibadah the requirement number one to be Muhammadi is ibadah. Number two, muhabba. Number three, sunnah. And number four, khidmah. Learn this. If you want to truly become Muhammadi, learn these requirements. Ibadah, muhabba, sunnah, and khidmah. Ibadah, you understand? Worship. Muhabba, you understand? Love. Right? Sunnah, you understand? And of course, khidmah is service. What do I mean by ibadah? Allahu Akbar. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa See, this is the spiritual dimension. Rabi bin Ka'ba al-Aslami, everybody knows this waqiyah. I'm not going to repeat it to you. You've heard it before in Sahih Muslim. He said, As'aluka murafaqataka fil jannah, ya Rasulullah. Right? He said, ya Rasulullah, I require and I desire your companionship in jannah. That's what he asks for. I want ma'ahu, I want to be Muhammadi in this world and I want to be Muhammadi in the Year after, the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, done, granted. Didn't have to wait for Jibreel Amin to come down and say, let me get wahi from Allah. With Allah. No, Rasulullah said, done. Done. Why? Jannat Rasulullah ki hai, na? Jannat Rasulullah ki hai. Allah has given him all of us. Ham Rasulullah ki hai, Jannat Rasulullah ki hai. Ham Rasulullah ki hai, Jannat Rasulullah ki finish. So Rasulullah said, Rabbi bin Kaab, he said, done. Do you want something more than that? Allahu Akbar. Yeah. Fahal mim mazid. These are my words of Quran. You want more than that? You say, I said, this is more than enough. Sab kuch khuda se maang liya, tujko maang kar. Uthte nahi hai haat mere is dua ke baad. Khalas. Rasulullah said, fa'inuni bis sujood. He said, yes. Yes. Jannah is yours, guarantee is mine. Zamarat may be diyahu. But help me, Rabbi. Help me, Rabbi. 
right? So that I can, I have justification for my thing there. Engage in a lot of sajda. Engage in a lot of salah. Engage, because that is the shu'ar and this is the defining characteristics of those people who are with Muhammad Rasulullah. وَالَّذِينَ مَعَهُ وَزَعَيْبَهُ الْقُرْآنِ سِيمَاهُمْ فِي وُجُوهِهِمْ مِنْ أَثَرِسْ سُجُود So Rasulullah said, عشق ہے, محبت ہے, نسبت ہے but اس کے ساتھ و ساتھ عبادت بھی ہو they must be ibadat wood. So he said, in spite of the fact, Rabbi ibn Aqab Aslami, I know you're not going to miss a salah. He's a sahabi, a rasul. He's not going to miss a salah. But Rasulullah to teach us, he says, Barakafe jama shari'at, barakafe sandane ishq. He said, on one hand, you must have the goblet of sharia, and on the other hand, you must have the, the, you know, the, the sin of ishq. Both must be balanced. So fa'inuni bi katrati sujood, engage in a lot of ibadah. And the second ibadah is dua. Hum ye dua karte hain na. Ya Allah, wa dhikhlni fi jannat al-firdaus. Bi ghayri hisab insha Allah ta'ala. Ma'al ladhina amallahu alayhi min nabiyyin. Wa siddiqin wa shayb. Kar lete hain na. Can I finish one dua today? Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Sahibun alayn. Who should make the khidmah of carrying the sandals of the Prophet of Allah. Abu Huraira gave him this title. He said, you have, uh, you have Abdullah ibn Mas'ud sahibu na'alain with you. And you're asking me for dua? He's the one who carried the na'alain of the Prophet of Allah. He should place it inside his sleeve here and wait for Rasulullah to come. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud used to make this dua. Allahumma inni as'aluka imanan la yartad. Ya Allah, I ask of you iman for that quality of iman that will never be rejected. Wa na'iman la yantad. And blessing and bliss that is never going to come to an end. And then his last part of his dua. وَمُرَافَقَةَ مُحَمَّدٍ فِي جَنَّةِ الْخُلْدِ And Allah, I ask of you for the companionship of Rasulullah in the Jannah of Eden, in the Garden of Eden. Rasulullah happened to be passing by. And Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu was reciting Surah Nisa. He read a large portion of Surah to Nisa in his salah. And Rasulullah was in Masjid Nabi. And he can see Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is in salah. So in his salah, he's reciting Surah to Nisa. And when he finished off Surah to Nisa, before he could, in his salah, he made the dua, Allahumma inni as'aluka imanan la yartad wa na'eeman la yanfad wa murafaqata muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi jannati al-khuld. So Siddiq Akbar and Sayyidina Umar Farooq were with Rasulullah. And when Rasulullah heard this dua, made by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Rasulullah said, Sal, ask for it and you'll be granted. Ask for it and you'll be granted. Ask for it and you'll be granted. When Abdullah ibn Mas'ud finished off his salah, Siddiq Akbar ran to him and he said, do you know what Rasulullah said? Rasulullah heard this dua of yours that you want to be with him in Jannah. Rasulullah said, ask and you'll be granted. Meaning it has been granted to you. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, there was not a single salah in my life thereafter, whether it was the first salah or my nafil salah, that I did not recite, recite and make this dua in every single salah of mine. Subhanallah, subhanallah. I'm just giving you a few examples, right, of ibadah. Then, salawat. 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 Ubay bin Ka'ab. You know the hadith. Ubay bin Ka'ab is the greatest qari of Quran. Greatest qari of Quran. Nobody can beat Ubay Ka'ab in Qira. Rasulullah out of everybody, I'm giving you the gist of the hadith. Rasulullah out of everybody could have asked anybody how much of salawat you recite upon me. He didn't ask anybody. He asked one person in particular. The one who is the most well versed in Quran. So he didn't answer, yes, so I recite so much. The Holy Prophet said, if you increased it, you would be better for you. He said, yes, so I increased it. I'm using my words now, just of the hadith, mafhum of hadith, right? 50%. Rasulullah sometimes said, if you increase it, it will be better for you. Now, greatest qari of Quran, what you should be encouraging him to do? Quran for all. You're the best qari of Quran amongst the Sahaba. Rasulullah tells you, if you increase your spare time in sending salawat upon me, it will be better for you. Then Ubay bin Ka'ab goes to 75% example. Until Rasul said, if you increase your salawat upon me, it would be better for you. 
until Ubay bin Kaab gave up. He said, Ya Rasulullah, every other spare time that I have, I will devote it in terms of ibadah or seeking salawat upon you and making sin durood and salam upon you, Ya Rasulullah. Then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if you do that, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise you in status and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you. It's just the hadith you are aware of. You understand this position. And what happens? In Jannah, I'm going very quickly in terms of time. In Jannah, there are three things. One is physical on the day of Qiyamah. On the day of Qiyamah, every one of us needs to prepare for Qiyamah, obviously. Right? But how do you prepare? Firstly, you've got to have what we would call uh, muhabbah number one, right? But what you would call is you'll have position, station, and exaltation. Right? You need three things. You need to be physically closest to the one who is going to intercede for you. In the crowd of 1.7 billion Muslims currently, if you were to stand today and there are 1.7 billion Muslims standing there, what are the chances of anybody seeing you? What are the chances? Where do you think you'll be standing? Tell me. Where will you be standing? Right. Nobody knows. But the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave us an, an answer. He said, Inna min ahabbikum wa akhrabikum minni majlisa. Verily the one who will be the most beloved to you. Wa akhrabakum minni majlisa. And physically closest to me in the gathering of Qayyama. Please, I want you to understand the value of what I'm telling you here. Rasulullah is not telling you only be loved, you'll be the one that be most beloved to me, but he will be physically close to me. Physically closest to me on the day of Qiyamah. So in a crowd of 1.7 billion or 7 billion or 10 billion people on the day of Qiyamah, Rasulullah is saying, the one who will be physically closest to me, meaning here we are, here we are, this is closest, not the one in the back, closest here. Rasulullah is the one who has the best character. Best character. Best character. Rasulullah said, that will qualify you for to be physically closest to me and most beloved to me. This is ibadah and sunnah. Ibadah and sunnah. This sunnah of being loving of being ameen, trustworthy, of being sadiq, being truthful, and, and echoing every character trait of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is something that you and I neglect. But in terms of its value, you are going to be guaranteed, inshallah ta'ala, the physical proximity to the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today, people pay millions. People pay big money just to be near, astaghfirullah, one celebrity. No, I want to be sitting, you know, in that, in that table there. Yeah. Rasulullah is telling you, I'm giving you free ticket on the day of Qayyama. Just imbue in yourself. And automatically, that's your ticket to be closest to me on the day of Qayyama. Yeah. Imagine if Rasulullah... Okay? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in terms of sunnah, in terms of sunnah, right? The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the, in the hadith, you know, for the scholars, those who know, right? This hadith has it's, it's, it's been narrated by Imam At-Tirmidhi radiallahu alayhi It's a very lengthy hadith of the, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stated. He said to Sayyidina uh, Anas bin Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says, Ya Bunayya, he said, Ya Bunayya, uh, in qadarta an tusbiha wa tumsi laysa fi qalbika ghishun li ahadin fafal. Look at sunnah. Look at character. You want character? Very difficult one. Very difficult. This is sunnah. He said, oh my son, if you can spend the entire day and the entire night in this condition that you have no animosity, no enmity, no, no ill feeling for anybody in your heart, then do that because that is my sunnah. Subhanallah. Oi. Ya bunay. What a lovely word. Ya bunay. Yo, my beloved son. Right, and the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, he says, "Tumma qal, ya bunayya, wa thalika min sunnati, and this is my sunnah. This is my sunnah. Other sunnah are easy. Other sunnah are easy. Take the difficult one. 
Just don't decorate your outer with sunnah, your zahir with sunnah. Dick sunnah. And what is that? Laysa fi qalbika ghish. There's no ill feeling in your heart, animosity for anybody in your heart. Wa dhalika min sunnati. And that is my sunnah. Wa man ahya sunnati. Then Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, and whosoever revives a sunnah like this, kana ma'i fi jannah will be with me in Jannah. Hmm. See, the Prophet you know, kept on raising the bar as well. He didn't make it just easy for us. We are like this. 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 He said, wait, all well and good. But he says, I want to see your outer and your inner. They must be synchronized. لَيْسَ فِي قَلْبِكَ غِشْ Purify that heart. Empty that heart. Because that heart which has the love of Rasulullah, there is no place for animosity in it. There is no place for enmity in it. There is no place for any type of, uh, you, know, um, uh, you know, hatred in it. Because there is only love for Rasulullah. And then Rasulullah sallallahu again, I forgot the hadith of sunnah, again, means in sunnah. The Holy Prophet sallallahu said, أَوْلَ النَّاسِ بِيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَكْثَرُهُمْ عَلَيَّ صَلَاةً Again, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the one who will be most closest to me and most dearest to me on the day of Qiyamah will be the one whose tongue was constantly making salawat upon me. Dil pukare Muhammad, Muhammad, bole nas nas, Madina, Madina. What is Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam telling you here? He said, you want to be Muhammadi. Walladina ma'ah, those who are with him, spiritually, jismu ho kahi apna, dil to hai, Madine me. This is what it is. It's just not, you know, just lip service. If there's lip service, it must only be salawat and durood on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. That is what ma'ah. And let me make it a little bit more difficult for you. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam stated, Yo, akmalul mu'minina imanan. Ahsanuhum khulqa. Wa khiyarukum khiyarukum linisaihim. Oh, the Prophet said that the most perfect of you in faith is he who has the best character. And the best of the best in character are those who are the best to their wives. Hmm? Mind you, mind you, Rasulullah is very equal. Right? He may have said Nisa'ihi, but the the intimation here is both spouses. Meaning you have to be the best wife you can be and you must try to be the best husband that you can be. But you saw the mi'yar, the standard, the gold standard. So you got to ask yourself this question. Do I want to be with Rasulullah? The Rasulullah is not going to ask your peer sahab, Ji, how nice were you to, uh, uh, how nice was he to you as your murid? He's going to ask your wife, come here, come here, man. My ummati, come here. How did he treat you? <laughs> this is not easy. We want the easy ones out. We want the easy ones out. Okay? But this is where the true metal comes in. Yes, we know it's difficult to be a husband. Yes, we know it's difficult to be a wife. But take it as sunnah that you take the difficulties that are placed upon you by your spouse, your husband or your wife. They shout at you. They'll scream at you. Right? They'll give you a hard time without any similarities or anything for this. Rasulullah sallallahu also had to undergo some of these things. This Quran is testifies to it. So at the very least, take it as sunnah to bear some of the difficulties that you undergo from your spouse. And Rasulullah said, if you can modify your behavior in this way, and I'm giving myself this nasiha first, if you can modify yourself in behavior that way, what is your reward instead? Dearest to the Rasul of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in terms of thawab, ma min shayin athqalu fil mizan min husnul khulq. Nothing is weightier on the day of qiyamah in the scales of justice than good character. And Rasulullah says, that's what I want from you. That's what I want from a Muhammadi very quickly because of time. The final one is khidmah. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stated, he said, Ana wa kafil yatimi fil jannati hakada. Allahu Akbar. He said, I am the one who took care of an orphan will be like this in Jannah. And he put both his fingers together. 
Who doesn't want this? Who doesn't want this? Don't you want to be like this with Rasulullah? Because if you are like this with Rasulullah, and Rasulullah pointed, he didn't say to be close to me in Jannah, he physically showed it. He wanted to show you, don't even take a, make a mistake, that you know, kuch na kuch fasla rahe, na -a. He said, if you want to be in al wasila particular, and inshallah ta'ala, I know I'm supposed to end now, inshallah ta'ala. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam stated, right, he says, ana wa mura'atun shaf'a'u al-khaddayn ka hatayni yawm al-qiyamah wa awma yazidu bil wasta wa sababiba. He says, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam stated, I and a woman, he's speaking about men, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam here in particular, singled out one category of woman. I and a woman whose cheeks have become, you know, withdrawn and darkened, right? Shall on the day of resurrection be like this on the day of Qiyamah. And he pointed with his, with his middle finger and his forefinger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And who is that? What did he mean by that day? He said, a woman who loses her rank and beauty. She was in a high rank and beauty, but her husband passed away. And the responsibility of bringing up her children now fell on her alone. Allah, look at Rahmah of Rahmatullil Alameen. One of the most difficult positions to be in is to be a single mother today. When the husband has passed on, she was a woman of rank and beauty. And the time that she took in taking care of her children and bringing them up and giving them the best tarbiyah that they could till they separate or go their own ways or they die, Rasulullah said, she will be with me in Jannah like this. Another hadith, it's a little bit weak of hadith there, but it's, it's good. The Holy Prophet, and this is Musan Abu 